Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to my vlogs. As always, it's always appreciated seeing you here and today I'm hopefully going to take you through an enjoyable and educational and insightful and all that good stuff vlog again. And today I'm actually going to be walking you through my hack squats. I literally recorded my hack squats from week one of this last mesocycle all the way through and to deloading. So I have actually, this is a bit of a unique mesocycle that I ran through because it was kind of hell. I typically run five weeks of accumulation, making things harder and harder and harder, accumulating volume, intensity, getting closer to failure before running a one week deload. So it's normally five to one in terms of a ratio of training hard to, to kind of training easy, six week mesocycle length. This was seven weeks. And that was basically because I filled out some gaps on my tattoo. I mean, I didn't fill them out, <laughs> my tattoo artist did. And so I wanted, to, I had that appointment booked and that meant that my mesocycle needed to be six weeks in length. And I thought, I'm coming off the back of an active recovery. So maybe I'll have opened up the window between my MEV and MRV to a point where actually I can go for six weeks and I can adapt that much better because I can grow that much better. And uh, uh, kind of could, kind of couldn't. <laughs> Week six was certainly torturous. Also wasn't helped because I think I may have said I was at the Fit Expo, uh, which was all the way in Liverpool. First time I've actually been to Liverpool, but it was a long weekend, very tiring weekend, and I didn't sleep the best there or have the best nutrition. Very fun, but that left me feeling completely trashed, and that was the end of week five. So I was already feeling trashed from week five training, and then, yeah, I had to take the Monday off, which I did completely. I was an upper body day, I took completely off, and then I went in on Tuesday, which is actually my hack squat day. So anyway, you'll see week one all the way through to week six, and then my deload week seven. I'm going to be showing you kind of where where I started, how I accumulated, what changed, what went through that. And you're also going to be able to see visually, because I know I've had requests of this, visually, what does a kind of week one look like versus like a week before deloading and then everything in the mix. And then what does a, yeah, what does a deload week look like? Because I have heard people say, oh, three to four reps in reserve, that's deload training. And I'm kind of like scratching my head. That don't make much sense to me. And you're going to see what my week one all the way through to that week six and deload looks like and how you can kind of be like, oh, okay, maybe I can think about applying this to myself, how that might look for my own training. And it, bear in mind, this is one lift and this is me as an individual, but hopefully there's some insights and things to pull away from this. Don't think there's anything else to really run you by, but let's get into some of this lifting then. So first you're going to see my setup for the mesocycle. I call this week one, like the foundation for the entire mesocycle. We're trying to achieve minimum thresholds in terms of relative intensity. So for like decent growth, three to four RER, some kind of efficacious, real decent growth. We want to be that close to failure in terms of reps and reserve. Then we want to be achieving a minimum effective total volume in terms of number of hard sets. And that's kind of where we want to start that mesocycle. So it's the foundation, everything there on we've met minimum. So anything above there is kind of a bonus, right? So we're going to move through maximal adaptive volume until just your MRV, your systemic MRV meets you. So in week one, that's why it's trying to achieve that three to four RAR for this lift. And the way I kind of base that, and you hopefully have seen a video by Pascal on our YouTube channel and even the presentation that's available where he talks about setting up that week one. And so essentially you'll see my week one, I just added five kilos from my previous mesocycles week one. And that would leave me five kilos or so heavier in my final week of my mesocycle, so long as I can progress by five kilos every week. So I overall have hit like a five kilo PR by the last week of this mesocycle. I actually ended up hitting a 7.5 kilo PR and I'll talk about that. And that's because this kind of mesocycle was extended by one week. So yeah, I started off here and you'll see me lifting towards a three to four RER. And then every week from that point onwards, I'm not necessarily having specific reps and reserve targets in mind. Even week one, I don't necessarily need like a specific rep and reserve target. I know I want it to be challenging. I know I don't want it to be soul destroying. I know roughly where my three to four RER should be. And I'm hoping I've progressed a little bit because I've been diligent with my rest recovery and I'm in a surplus. So I'm like, I want a minimum gain of like two to 3% load, which is about five kilos for this hack squat. And so I've started there. And then every week there on, I'm like, right, I should be able to progress, especially because this is a big compound lift, a small amount of load every week. So I lead to when I finish this mesocycle hitting a, a small PR on last mesocycle, I should be able to achieve that. 
and my reps in reserve I know will come down because I'm progressively overloading I'm making things harder over time but I don't worry like okay have to be like yeah three to four RER so long as I hit in and around that ballpark I know every week they're on is harder it's progressive overload it's productive training so I just go in there and I just look to beat it by a little bit I don't look to like okay I need next week I'm going to do the absolute most I can do I just look to beat the last week because I know that's going to keep me with the best kind of stimulus to fatigue trade-off if I went immediately to like my naught reps and reserve my final week before deloading style lift where would I go from there this kind of gives me a nice walkway of like just stepwise up 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 and theoretically keeps me at that maximal adaptive volume so long as I'm auto-regulating my training volume along with it in terms of number of sets so you'll see here every week I just look to add five kilos add five kilos add five kilos and every week I match repetitions and my reps and reserves slowly come down week on week. And so hopefully visually you can see how that looks and how, yeah, it just, yeah, hopefully you can almost compare as well. If you watch back the video, you can see kind of, you look at week one, and you're like, okay, yeah, that kind of looked tough, but you, you have plenty in there. And then you look in the middle and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see how things are slowing down a bit more for those final reps. You look a little bit less like you're fresh after you finish that set. And then in the final weeks, you're like, oh man, yeah, there's some pretty grindy reps there. Absolutely see how you've moved from like hard training to really hard training to basically the most you can do, not RAR. So not reps and reserve being no more good reps left, no more reps with good technique and form and execution. And you can kind of see how I transition again with a small amount of load every week. Now, if this was a different lift, if it was a more isolation based lift or a lift essentially where the load was much less i always use like dumbbell lateral raises and is an example where a lot of gyms they go up in two kilo jumps a two kilo jump from like 10 kilos like 10 to 20 kilos is like well, or less than 10 kilos some people are using for dumbbell lateral raises like a two kilo jump is a huge percentage increase so you can't expect to add load every week with that so you might add reps and so but for me for a compound lift i think it makes a lot of sense you can keep reps level and just add a small amount of load So as I mentioned before, this mesocycle was extended by one week. So there were six weeks of accumulation. Now, looking at my week five lift, I wasn't sure I was at, that was a naught to one RER. Like it was in and around that ballpark. I can't be sure it was naught RER. It was very close. It was extremely difficult. Whereas, so I wasn't certain I could beat it. So going into this week six, which is kind of territory I don't normally dive into, I was very nervous. I was like, I'm almost certain I couldn't beat it by adding five kilos. So I was just like, right, let's be smart here. Let's not just go for that like normal typical jump because you can't typically make that. You're an advanced bodybuilder. You've been doing this for over a decade now. Like it's just unrealistic for you to have progressed from last mesocycle by 10 kilos. So I added the smallest increment, which was two and a half kilos. Well, I suppose I could have added a 1.25 kilo just on one side, right? So I could have gone even less, but I was like, man. I put two and a half kilos on and I, I, like I, I just that was definitely not RER for me and again RER is somewhat subjective and so you have to take that into consideration too but you know yourself I always look at it like this once you're an advanced lifter your ability to rate your perceived exertion is much better it's shown in literature makes sense experience and then secondly to that when you train with heavier loads Again, the literature shows you're better at rating reps in reserve than like lighter loads and higher reps. So when you are like when you're one to naught RER, like you know you're there. And also, what's the difference between naught and one? Like what's the benefit of actually going to naught? There, there is no extra benefit. It's just knowing that you're there. So the most important thing also is you're progressing from previous mesocycles. And I've progressed my hack squat 
leaps and bounds. It's basically gone up five kilos for the last like three, four months, which is great. And so that shows things that I'm definitely training hard enough. And so guys, as always, if you have any questions associated with my training, if there's any vlogs you'd particularly like to see, definitely let me know. We're hoping we're gonna get some professional vlogs filmed very soon so we can kind of start making them a little bit more interesting to watch and keep pumping out great content. Uh, as anyone who's kind of done vlogs and vlogging and content creation and YouTube, it is fun and I love doing it, but it takes a lot of time like and energy and also it's a skill set that I don't have like to the highest degree. So I highly appreciate that you tune into these because I appreciate they're very raw. They're not incredibly professionally done. So I highly appreciate that. And I hope that there's definitely some knowledge and also some enjoyment from watching these and some things that you can apply to yourself. But for now, guys, um, as always, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. If you think your friends would enjoy it, please share it with them. All that good stuff. Give us a like. If you're watching this far through, please do like drop a comment in and just say how you liked it, what have you. And I will catch you in the next one.